Welcome to Papa's Workshop. Have you ever used image trace and easel and had a problem? I bet you have. And today we're going to take a look at it and see some of the problems and give you some solutions. Now the other thing that we're going to do is to have a little bit of fun is I'm actually going to trace these on a piece of paper to begin with to be able to make this work. Create a little bit more of a challenge. And then inside the software we're going to change a few things just for the fun of it. So let's get started. Before we get started on today's video, I need to ask a big favor. Recently, YouTube has changed their algorithms and it's making it increasingly difficult to be able to get my message out to all the people that are interested. So please, I need your help to like this video and to subscribe to the channel. By doing so, it will help trigger those algorithms and make it where this channel is recommended to more and more people. Now, let's get back to the today's project. All right, here's how we're going to begin. I'm going to have a piece of paper that's 11 by 14, which is the legal size paper. And I'm going to take the push stick and that is going to center into this paper just fine. Now I'm taking a regular ballpoint pen, that's a black ink, and I'm going to trace this. And I want to make sure that I get a good solid line to be able to make this work because that is going to be the key to this whole entire project. This line has to be able to be picked up by the computer. If not, it's not going to work. Now when I did this original cutout, this bottom edge was rough and I did not want to be able to draw that line. So all I'm doing is just marking my two points. I'm going to use the straight edge and I'm going to connect the points. And that's going to give me a very good solid straight line. The next thing that I want to do is put in a reference point. I'm going to draw a one inch line because this image is not going to come in at full scale. And having this one inch reference line will be able to make it where I should be able to expand this and have the exact same size push stick. Now with the first one completed, I'm going to set this aside and I'm going to take another piece of paper and draw out this second push stick. Now this one's a little bit longer, but putting it at the angle will work just fine. Now a good up close look at this drawing and everything appears to be really good. Let's see what happens when we get it into the computer. Now I took my camera and I took a very close up picture of each of those drawings. And I sent those over to the computer so that I had it on file. Okay, I have easel open and this is a brand new project. So the first step is look at the sidebar menu and down at the very bottom you select that and that's the import. And I want image trace. So I select the image trace and that brings up the menu to allow me to import that file that I just took the photo of. All we have to do is just follow the steps. It says select files to upload. So you click on that and it goes over to your computer. Now I know this is the file right here. So I'm going to click on it, open it, and that will bring it right into easel. I just click on the upload button and here it is. Now, if you look at this file, it's not looking real good. Now, the first thing you may ask is, well, image trace doesn't work. Well, no, that's really not the case. It's actually the file. Now, a couple of things that we can do. By using the threshold, we can use the slide bar and increase that or decrease it. And by doing so, we can make the image better. So if you look right here, we've almost got the full image. We do have some garbage at the top and bottom. I can also, instead of using the slide bar, I can type in the numbers. And now as I increase that, I'm picking up a lot of trash and I don't want that. But at the same time, my image is not a complete image. So should you give up on the image trace? Well, I have to say, no, you don't. But let's go ahead and do this. Let's import this in and see what we get. So if you look, this image as it 
imported into easel is really tiny. Now this, you know, was almost 14 inches. And you can see here, it looks like it's about five and a half inches. And it does have quite a bit of garbage that transferred in. And you can see at the top where the image is not complete. So here's the real question. How do we get this corrected? How do we get this image to look good and be able to import it in to the easel software? Well, let's go back to the beginning and we're going to start over and I'm going to show you a little bit different way to be able to get this image into easel. So I went back to the original drawing and this time I actually traced the outline of this push stick with a black Sharpie pen. And this gives a much darker and a wider line to be able to work with. The other thing I want you to notice, I did not draw that bold black line on the inside of that handle. I'm going to treat that a little bit different. We're going to use a different technique for that. At this point, we're starting completely over. I have a brand new uh, workpiece again. I completely cleared out the old drawing and it's time to be able to import in the new drawing. So back to that sidebar menu, select image trace, and we're going to upload the new file. So I just click on the upload file that goes over to the computer and there's the new file right there we're going to select. And now we'll just open that and you see the file. So let's just click on upload. You notice this time we get the full push stick except for that inner handle and that's okay. We're going to deal with that in a moment. But as far as the outline, it's almost a complete drawing. There's one spot that did not complete the line. By increasing the threshold now, it darkens that outer line. It begins to show the inner portion of the cutout and it does pick up some extra garbage on the top and bottom. But that's okay. The most important thing is we do have a good solid line around the perimeter of the push stick. You'll also notice that my little one inch scale really didn't come through. So we're not going to worry about that. I'm going to click import and we're going to bring that into easel. And again, you can see this is a very small image. You can also see where that handle did come through on the inner portion a little bit better. Here's the important thing. Look at the preview to the right. It is showing that it really is not carving anything at all. So the question becomes why? So let's take this one step at a time. I'm going to go ahead and highlight the image at the top of that garbage and we're going to delete that and get it out of the way. I'm also going to do the exact same thing to the bottom. Now this cleans it up a whole lot. Now let's look at the inner circle and look at this. If I highlight that, you notice only part of it gets highlighted. The reason being it is not a complete oval. There are bits and pieces and parts and that we're going to have to deal with because that will not cut out. Now I'm also highlighting my one inch scale and I want to be able to delete that and get that out of the way because I don't want to forget about that and leave it in the in the um, work area. So that's now deleted. Now remember on the preview nothing is carving. I want to zoom in and show you why. So I want to get in real close and we're going to take a look at these lines. Now hopefully you can see it. But you see the nodes on the outside and you also see a node on the inside. There's actually two tool paths there. And that's the reason when you look at that preview nothing is carving. So what we have to be able to do is get rid of one of those tool paths. Now one of the things that I am in a habit of doing is that I'll make a copy of this image and bring it into a new workpiece. That way I can work with it, I can improve it, and sometimes mess it up. But I can always go back to the original one and start over if I need be. But if you zoom in real close, you can see those two tool paths. So I'm going to go to the Edit Node menu and I can highlight that outer one and I can delete it. And then I can delete those nodes one at a time all the way around the entire perimeter of this push stick. And by doing so, it creates a pocket. But a pocket I can deal with. Now I'm going to zoom in a little bit closer. 
and what you can see now is one toolpath. That was the goal. Now while I'm zoomed in, I want to move around so that you can see this a little bit closer on the whole push stick. And you can see now the individual nodes that make up the one toolpath. The next thing to do is just highlight this one image now. Go over to the cut menu and we're going to go to the cut path and I'm going to select cut on the outside of this image. And now you see one toolpath that cuts all the way around the perimeter. And if you look at the preview, you see the same thing. This now will cut out. So how do we deal with that enter OFL that's no longer there? Well, we're just going to make a new one. Remember I said we're going to do something a little bit different here. So all I did is just went over to the shapes menu, pulled in a rectangle, and I'm just going to take that and slide it right into position and push it right up where it needs to be. And I'll make sure that it's parallel. And I'll go ahead and center that in the space, grab the little handle, and we're going to drag it down where it's long enough. Now I'm going to take the actual push tip and measure this oval. So it looks like this is about four and a quarter inches by one inch. So I'll set that aside now and I'll actually go over and type in the exact size. And I can just key that into the height and into the width. So with this set now at the four inches by the one inch, I have that set. But I need to be able to get that radius on each end. Well, I know this is one inch wide. All I need to do is come down for the corner radius, put in 0.5, and that is going to give me my oval that I need for this inner handle. Last step is just to be able to center it, and you can see it looks just the same as the original. But I have a pocket. I don't have the actual cutout. So I'm just going to highlight this object, go over to the cut do my drop down from my cut path and select on the inside. Now this will carve and you can look at the preview over to the right and you can see that that looks really good. For the second push stick, I did the exact same thing. I took my black marker and drew around my push stick, saved the file and I'm going to bring this into a new workpiece, and we'll do the exact same process. After cleaning up all the garbage, I just am left with the push stick, but I want to zoom in real close. And again, you can see the two blue lines. That is the two tool paths that are shown there. And again, we need to eliminate one of them. So I'm going to highlight the nodes on the outside. And again, I'm going to delete this one at a time. And we're going to get rid of these extra nodes on the outside of this push stick all the way around. With the outer tool path gone, I want to focus on this notch up here. We've got some extra nodes, and it's not at a 90 degree angle. So what I want to be able to do is highlight that, and then we can actually edit and eliminate some of those extra nodes that we don't need. So I can just individually select the node and delete it. And I have one more right here I want to select and delete. And now I'll have a straight line between those different nodes. I can highlight this node at the corner now, and I can actually take this and drag it over and create the angle that I'm looking for. So by doing that, I can move the node, thus moving the tool path to create the line that I want. Now I can zoom out and let you see the completed push stick, and it's ready to be able to carve. Now a couple of things I want to be able to point out. This push stick can be really done at any size that you want. It can either be longer or shorter. All depends on what you want just at the click of the mouse. So I'm going to grab this handle at the corner and I'm going to pull this back out to the length that I want. And then I'm going to take a look at this handle at the top and I can rotate this. I really don't want to carve this at an angle. It just wastes too much material. So I can now slide that right down at the very bottom and use the minimum amount of material to be able to carve this push stick. You also notice there are tabs still in this and I do not want to have the tabs. We're going to eliminate that. 
and I can do that right here where it says use tabs and that's checked so I want to uncheck that so this is now ready to be able to carve I want to look at this first push stick and I have this in the edit node and I want to zoom in right into this area and I can see that this is not forming a 90 degree angle but the first thing I want to do is go ahead and delete this node so it's highlighted and then I just hit delete and then I can take this node and I can stretch it back to create more of a 90 degree angle just like that that's the 90 degree angle that I'm looking for so don't be afraid to be able to adjust and move and play with these nodes. Now the last thing I want to take a look at, if we look back over here at this section, this is set for a half inch thickness and that is good because that is how I cut out this particular push stick. But on the other push stick, let's open up that uh, workpiece, it too is set at the 0.5 and that's really too thick. The material that I was using for that was 0.25 of an inch so I can just change that number and that will change the thickness I can well there you have a quick introduction into the image trace in easel now I also touched on to edit nodes which is a real good tool to be able to use so don't get frustrated about the image trace it's really not that bad and it is very very useful the good thing about this project now I have a file where anytime that I need a new push stick of any design I can go ahead and carve one very easily now one of the things that I am going to be doing I'm going to take in a next video I'm going to take this file I'm going to generate the g-code and then be able to send it over and use a universal g-code sender to be able to carve it on the new carve so you don't want to miss that video so please go ahead and subscribe and hit that little bell notification so you won't miss out on any video and please like this video oh and by the way don't forget to look at the videos over here